Warning, the Dominarian Surgeon General has found that savage beatings can lead to chump blocks, life reduction, and even game loss. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to The Planeswalker Project. Hailing from the Shard of Esper comes one of the finest artificers in the multiverse. Sidri, the galvanic genius, is an amazing commander with a potency for combos and powerful ones at that. Rocking some amazing artwork by Magic's finest, Therese Nielsen, let's take a look at what this commander can do. For a mere 3 mana, 1 black, 1 white, 1 blue, you get a 2-2 human artificer with the ability to install an artifact until the end of turn by paying 1 blue mana. Its power and toughness are equal to its converted mana cost. For 1 white and 1 black mana, a target artifact creature can get death touch and lifelink until end of turn. These two abilities are going to be capitalized upon with this deck. The build we're going for specifically will include the best value artifacts we can get, all the while controlling the board using board wipes and lockdown. Artifacts by design have quite a bit of synergy, so as a result, the deck runs numerous combos, many of which have interest in flexibility and ease of access. We also run a few powerful win conditions. If you're a fan of artifacts and would like to stick them on legs to win your commander games, Sidri might be the deck for you. We don't run a whole lot of creatures in this deck as a lot of our strength is going to come from our artifacts. The creatures we do run however are going to bring a lot of power to the table. Everyone's favorite Cold Snap legend, Arkham Daxon, appears as a potent tutor. We can use him in conjunction with Sidri to give legs to an unneeded artifact and then use him to swap it out for a larger artifact. Master Transmuter is great for cheating in our costlier artifacts and can even be used to blink herself if targeted. We have another great artifact legend, the infamous Memnarch, who can be used to steal our opponent's artifacts. Or we can make their non-artifact permanents into artifacts and then steal them. Permanently. My good friend Muzio comes in as another way to cheat artifacts into play, and Kaladesh's Ode Padim, Console of Innovation, ensures our artifacts are safe from opponent's spells. Next up comes our artifacts, and we run quite a lot of them, and this is where most of our deck's ability comes from. My personal favorite is the Wing Con using Aetherflux Reservoir. Once we hit 51 life or more, we can use Sidri to turn the reservoir into a 4 4 lifelink death touch death star that can win the game immediately. You turn it into a lifelink creature, then pay 50. You deal the 50 damage to a player, presumably knocking them out, and then you regain the life via lifelink. Rinse and repeat until everyone around you is dead. Caltrops is another great candidate for the trick as well, being able to clear out an army of attacking creatures with the death touch trigger. Darksteel Forge is stupidly good, giving your artifacts indestructible. On the subject of the forge, Mycosynth Lattice makes your permanents into artifacts. Now all of our permanents are indestructible artifacts. For even more trickery, add an unwinding clock to make sure every turn your field is untapped and ready to do things. This works in very interesting tandem with Winter Orb, which while it's untapped, no one can untap more than one land per turn. Well, if all of our lands are artifacts that untap during every upkeep with the clock, we can work right around that restriction. The deck also runs a couple of nice board wipe tricks to help clear the field. Nevenero's Disc won't phase us if we have the Forge and Lattice up, but it will clean an opponent's board entirely, including the lands. Oblivion Stone also works quite nicely at cleaning off opponents. Again, our board is safe if we have our Forge combo in effect. That's just our basic framework. We do run quite a few tutors to get those key pieces quickly and efficiently. Enlightened Tutor can go for an artifact or enchantment at instant speed, so at any point, you can search for the card you need to win. If we need to get that tutor, we can use Mystical Tutor to get Enlightened Tutor to get our artifact win con. Vampiric and Demonic Tutor, of course. We also run the new Whirr of Invention, aka Court of Calling for Artifacts. We'll round out our tutor package with Fabricate to give us a very potent and very cheap means to snag whatever artifact we need. There are a number of Planeswalkers who can fit into this deck very nicely. We run three versions of Tezzeret, all great inclusions for artifact-themed strategies in general. Ugin and Karn are very, very useful towards control pieces, being able to work as threats on their own while keeping their pressure off the rest of our board. Talking about mana bases, we have blue, black, and white needs in this deck. For starters, we want to include the Artifact Lands, Darksteel Citadel, Ancient Den, Seat of Synod, and Vault of Whispers. We may not have access to Tolarian Academy, but the Academy Ruins will give us some nice artifact recursion. The budget-friendly version, Buried Ruin, does a similar thing but only once. 
Inventor's Fair works as another tutor for our artifacts, giving great utility once we no longer need it. For Mana Fixin, we have our three shock lands, Godless Shrine, Watery Grave, and Hollowed Fountain. We can fetch for them using our fetch land assortment. I'm not big on including fetches with an off-color fetch ability, as they limit what we can use them to grab. So I recommend Flooded Strand, Marsh Flats, and Polluted Delta, as these will go for any color we may need at any point. Tainted Field and Isle are nice includes, and to ensure we have a swamp at all times, Urborg is coming along for the ride. Arcane Sanctum may give us all three colors, but it does come in a slight loss of tempo. As a secondary set of dual lands, I like to run the check lands, which are Drowned Catacomb, Glacial Fortress, and Isolated Chapel. You can also run some of the Tango lands from Battle for Zendikar, but these may come at a loss of tempo as well, should you not have the two basic land requirements met. Lastly, while these may be rather expensive, the Shadowmoor filter lands are nice for mana fixing. While you could invest in more resources into fine tuning your mana base with things like original duels, this is about as intense a mana base as I feel is necessary for Sidri. So the way we want to run our deck is to early game tutor for some key artifacts, getting out Sidri as fast as possible. We want to get her out with our artifacts so that we can begin poking opponents with the ensouled artifacts. We can go for the Death Star combo with Aetherflux Reservoir, we can make our field untouchable with the Darksteel Forge and Mycosynth Lattice, and we can make them even better with Padim giving them all Hexproof. Good luck getting rid of that field. That's going to wrap up our tech on Sidri. What'd you think of our build? If you want to see the full deck list, we have included it in the description of this video. Remember to like and share this video with your Magic the Gathering playgroup, and if there's a commander that you would like to see covered in a future video, let us know in the comments below.